Alright, hi everyone, welcome back to the Odin tutorial series. I thought I would just have a brief kind of more detail. Um, so this is just a kind of overview of the package system in Odin. The package system is very simple. I mean, it's very similar to Go, I believe, um, with how it works. So, say for example, we have just, so we have main and other file. And generally what you do at the top is just say package main, you need a main package. But if you want to make another one, or just add another file, and you don't want to deal with anything, like, you just want to be as simple as possible, you just make another file, and just tag it with main. And then you can just call it. So in here, I can just do this, and just call testing stuff, test stuff. I don't need to link anything at all, and it will just work. So if you want to just simply make other files and not really care about having any hassle, you could just make everything package main and everything separated. If you want to make an actual package though, you basically have to make a folder. So you make a folder, you give it a name, and then basically I had a comment, someone claiming that the folder does not have to be the same name as the package. The thing is, I trust the compiler a lot more than I trust a YouTube comment. So we see here what we're doing, I'll run this. So this is what it's doing now. So let's just change the name of debug, right? So the package is debug, so it should be just debug. Let's just make it debug underscore. And let's try and run this again. See what happens. Path does not exist, debug. The folder needs to be the same name. So if you make a package, make it, it basically it works on the Windows folder system. That's how it works. Um, basically the creator found that the Windows system, the Windows folder system, does it for you. So so why make it so complicated importing stuff? So he basically uses the Windows file system so it looks for the folder. That's what it does. You're looking for a package, it looks for a folder. The folder needs to be the same name. Now it runs. So you need to make it the same name. So here I just have um, here I have basically just a, a debug folder with printing, loads of print functions and it has package debug and then track memory which has package debug. And that's how that works. So there is only really one downside I've found with this system. Let's say, for example, you have a, we, it's called the core, I guess, the standard library function, and you want to know the errors. Sometimes in VS Code, it won't work. It won't show you the errors. You can't click the function. It won't take you there. So you have to go on a wild goose chase trying to find this in the standard template library. Uh, if I go to, so we have Odin. Say, for example, we want to open a file, right? So we're in the Odin core. We gotta to go to OS and where the goddamn hell do I open a file? Do I have to like literally open this? Okay, do I have open file? Open file? Uh, open file? Okay, no, that doesn't exist. Okay, next file. What's the next folder? Uh, let's have a look. Uh, this, literally, just like uh, you can't find things. That's the only problem. These are all package OS. This is package OS. Go to OS, that's package OS. You can't find things if it doesn't take you there. So that's the only real problem I've had with the package system. Other than that, it's pretty much like it's so easy to use. Uh, you don't even need to make packages if you don't really care. You can just simply uh, just use package main. But it does make it neater if you make packages, I guess, if you don't want everything to be everywhere. And if, it, if you have so many files, eventually you want to make subfolders. But it's very easy. That moves on to the next thing. So I found a way to basically track memory in Odin. So I'll show you here. So here I have just in my tutorial project, which is in the description, uh, I wanted to way, find a way of tracking uh, allocations. So we're gonna go through the context system later. So what the context system basically is, is when you create the main function, I'm not exactly 100% sure on the details of how this works, but I believe that you have some basically variables that are created in the main function. And every time you create another function or link to another function or call another function, it will just pass a pointer to that. So you have basically loads of variables and it's called the context system. And we have an allocator in the context system. So if you ever want to change the allocator you're using, you simply just set. So here we have, there's a thing called a tracking allocator, which is in core.mem. So we have a tracking allocator. Oh, it will actually take me to it. That's useful. See, normally I'd have to go on a wild goose chase to find this, but it actually showed me where it is. And basically the tracking allocator is an allocator that will 
uh, tell you how much stuff is allocated and how many allocation counts and how many free counts and basically just it's a good way to track memory. So say for example we have so what we do is we have mem tracking allocator init which is just yeah we will we'll basically init will create the tracking allocator and then we set context.allocator equals mem.tracking allocator. So basically we're setting when we want uh, this when we when we want to allocate uh, uh, like when we want to allocate memory it will use a tracking allocator now. And then we just have this big defer statement just in case there's an error. Um but yeah, you basically just need to destroy the uh, tracking allocator with the defer. And basically, I created in my debug thing uh, track memory. So show allocated, show allocated bits, show allocated bytes, show allocated megabytes, show total allocated. Basically, just a load of debug functions that just show things. It also will like detect leak or leak report. Basically, um, will tell me. Well, it depends on, on, basically, it doesn't say that there's definitely a memory leak, but it says there might be, basically. So it's like how many times you've freed, how many times you've allocated, are they the same? But obviously, it depends on, on the situation. Sometimes you want them to be different. Sometimes you don't. Anyway, so we can use this. Uh, and we want to test allocations, right? So this will do that. So we set the tracking allocator to that. Let me just open... So I can actually run this. I'm not sure what this does. Okay, yeah, we, we can see what happens here. So zero allocated at the start, eight allocated, we allocate on the heap, 0, 0.00 megabytes allocated. After basic allocations pro procedure ended, zero beds a day, 88 total allocated. Detect leak, no memory leaks. So basically we can use this to test. So I'll show you how this works in code. So we have basic allocations. And what we can do, say for example, we create this heap allocation here, right? You can actually see defer working this way. You can say show allocated megabytes. Maybe I'll do basically I'll just called it's in debug, it's in a folder called debug. So debug dot show. Let's say allocated bits. Maybe bytes. Let's do bytes. Bytes is more logical. So we're going to show allocated bytes after. Sorry, we need the tracking allocator. So I remember, I don't remember how exactly we do this. Yeah, track, track. Sorry, we put in track. Maybe uh, in theory you could put context or allocator. But it's a pointer here, so normally you'd have to do at, but here it's a pointer anyway because it's in this function. If you're in the main, if it's where it's created, track. In theory, you could just send you know context or allocator as a pointer. But anyway, we have to use a pointer here. But here it's already a pointer. It's in the parameters. Anyway, so we're going to basically create an integer and then we're going to see the size. So eight bytes allocated. So one integer, eight bytes. So register size on a CPU and most of my CPU will obviously have a, a eight, uh, eight byte register. So an integer is eight bytes. So eight bytes in allocated. Then we can add more information if we want show allocated bytes. I can actually show the uh, example I showed last time where I basically created a memory leak. I'll show you that it actually does create a memory leak. Okay, we've got 10 bits. 10 bits allocated. Detailed leak report. Yeah, so that, that's a correct, I believe. I think we have the, uh, the whole basically slice two. Zero bits allocated, ten bits allocated. Uh, then detailed leak report, no memory leaks detected after basically, and then basically we show everything afterwards. So I might, let's basically change it to this five, and we'll see what happens. We should get detect a memory leak here. Detect leak, potential memory leak. So eighty total memory allocated, zero total freed. So we have a memory leak here. Basically, the problem here, as I, I explained last time, is we're basically freeing half the memory. I'm not sure why it says total free count zero. So we have current allocated bytes is 80, and it hasn't freed it. Um, basically, because we have a partial memory leak. Let's have a look. So 10 bits allocated, 
80 totals allocated. So basically, we're detecting a memory leak. So the problem here is this. So we, I'm returning a partial link to a string. Uh, sorry, a slice, a slice to memory, and we're we're only freeing half of that, um, which is the problem. <laughs> but if you make it full, we don't get a memory leak. Basically, this shows it. So you can just use these. So um, I can put these probably in the description where. It, so I'll probably put these in my GitHub or something like this. I should probably add freed, show freed megabytes as well. Basically, you can add this. Uh, there's no object-oriented programming in um, in in Odin. Basically, what you do is you send a pointer to a thing to a function. Is how you do it. Uh, it happens a lot with strings or here show allocated. We're sending a pointer to the tracking allocator and then using it in the function. Um, but basically, this is how you can. Uh, I'm not sure how, if you can get it to work because the tracking allocator I made in Zig. You basically whenever you use new you can have say new debug or alloc debug and it will basically tell you whenever you allocate here you have to specify so it's not going to built into it but you basically you just say you create something new and then say uh, how many allocated bits was that or how many freed was that and detailed league report i could get rid of this at the end um but basically that shows the memory leak that was just an overview of the package man package system and how you can track memory allocations. So let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you guys next time.